Okay, hello there. I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel, Life, Home, and My Linux Journeys. Uh, this is a video or a journey that I've, I've taken a while to do, mainly because I hesitate to do it. Uh, mainly because I'm going to be talking about Linux operating systems in, in a negative manner, or at least I feel like it's in a negative manner. And if you've decided, if you've listened to me, for instance, and you said, I'm going to try Linux. <laughs> well, I just want to be honest with you and tell you, it's not, Linux is not Windows. And if you go into Linux exploring and expecting to find Linux, and you're totally disappointed and use that to say, I don't like Linux. Well, that's my fault because I didn't warn you that Linux can be trying it it can test you to to learn and but if you're that type of person like myself that liked linux and i liked what i really liked about linux in the beginning was the exploration and the still the exploration is still going on over five years later and to me when i speak of linux it's just easy uh, it's not easy that's that's not right. It's easy to speak about Linux. But to tell the truth, like I said, it's if you decide to go the Linux route, it will be, it can be a little bumpy. And really, a lot of it's going to depend on what you want to do with your computer. Now, you probably need to sit down and make a list of what you want to do. Do you want to print at home? Do you want to connect to the internet at an office and print through them? Do you just want to browse the internet, pay bills, maybe do some research, some shopping, what have you? Uh, and that's just about the base of what you want to do. Then you won't have a problem with most any of the Linux distributions because they all offer some sort of web browser. <laughs> so that will be, that will be to your benefit because if that's all you want to do and you might want to play a game or something like that, a, a, a lower game, I'll call them, not a triple A, although some are available in triple A, if you're a gamer, some of that is available. And it's getting to become more and more available as time goes on. And so what I've done is after I decided that I would just have to tell the truth and say that Linux could be a problem and Linux is not necessarily for you it is for me but it may not be for you and if it's not it, i'm not going to hold any hard feelings about it uh, everybody has used what works for them for years windows worked for me that's what i knew <laughs> but now that i know what i know about windows i am so glad that i decided to learn a different operating system more specifically linux and some BSDs. Uh, so let's go over to my desktop. Let's, I want to show you something here. So if I bring up DistroWatch, which this is no definitive, absolutely for sure, everything is perfectly way, the way it is. I mean, you're going to get some, <laughs> you're going to get some different comments about how useful this list really is. But on the list on the right here that I'm referring to, it is a good starting spot. And to be honest, once I discovered this, I started at the top and just went right on down. And I guarantee you, if it had an installer that I, as a very, very new user, could install, I did. <laughs> that helped me uh, settle on what I have settled on. So in this case, in my first video, I said if you wanted to use Linux, I would recommend Linux Mint. And that's mainly because of the installer and the stability. However, there is one here, it's called MX Linux. And if you click that on the right here, if you click that, it'll open this. And this will be what is reported by DistroWatch. And it says right here, what you may want to pay attention to, not only this time, but any time, what it's based on. And in this case, it's based on Debian Stable, which means it's, it's going to install a little older kernel in the software. So if you have brand new spitting image devices or hardware, 
there's a chance that it may not recognize it. Although when we get to this that page, particular page, I'll show you where there is an upgraded version, I guess you could say, that will handle new new devices. So if you click this link right here where it says home page, and also let me point out here, they offer reviews. And a lot of these reviews are really good. And you know, if you're if you haven't taken the step yet and you're still in the learning or the learning part of this and you want to see what other people said, you can see there's at least 20 reviews right there. And I've seen the pages filled up with reviews. So anyway, if you click, this is their home page. You click right there, it'll open up their home page. And this is where your journey will begin with MX Linux. Now it goes on and talks about MX Linux and so some of this stuff you'll have will already have read if you've read those reviews on DistroWatch and you read their little I guess you call it a blurb. So you'll have some of this down, but this will give you a lot of information and this is where your journey is going to begin on all of your uh, Linux explorations, your their home page. Go figure, right? It goes and tells you all about it or a lot about it, I should say. When you decide this is what you want to try, you're going to click right here and I'll open up the download links. Here, their, their XFCE desktop, which is what I use, is what they call their flagship desktop. And it comes in a couple versions. The first one here is 64-bit, just a standard Debian kernel, the stable version. It comes in 32-bit. They still support 32-bit. It also uses this, eight, has available this AH, AHS version, it's called Advanced Hardware Support. And that's the one I downloaded and actually installed on this computer that we're facing to look at. And it has a respin, which is a, for Raspberry Pi OS. They also have KDE and Fluxbox, which is another journey altogether. But one of the things I want to point out right here, it says MX Workbench. If you click right here, it'll open up this page. And it tells you about what it is. It's one of my personal projects. It's not an official MX release. It showcases how easy to create custom MX ISOs. Most of the useful GUI tools, and it lists the tools that are actually installed with this. This is not made to be installed. It's made to boot up to and use. And for instance, being able to create, a, create your own ISO. All right. Let's get over to the actual installation here. Now, what I don't show you here is you'll see right in the screen right there in this welcome, it says popular apps. So when this first booted up, I opened up popular apps and I looked for simple screen recorder and I downloaded it and installed it. And that's how we're recording what we're seeing here. So let's get going. So this is MX23.2 Libretto which we're going to get an upgrade. So first thing I do in MX Linux is open up a program, a utility program called Gparted. And it gives you the password right here, your user demo password demo. <laughs> so, well, Gparted is a partitioning software that will allow you to partition. Here it's telling me there is an active partition, which I know is a swap partition. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to create a new partition table, GPT, because this is going on a UEFI boot on, on a SSD. So the first one we're going to create is called a EFI boot partition. And I'm going to give it 512 megabytes and format it to FAT32. Say add. All right, so the next thing I'm going to give it is what Linux calls a swap partition. You'll see I'm going to select Linux Swap. Now, pause this for a second here. Linux, uh, in Linux, they use Linux Swap Space. Swap Space now comes in several different varieties. You can use Swap Space, which is a dedicated spot on a hard drive, or you can use a Swap File, which is a dedicated place in the file system, or you can use a couple forms of ZRAM, which is basically the same thing, which is, but it's installed or used on the RAM, which is a lot faster. So in Windows, it would be a page file, 
and when in Linux here you see it's called Linux swap and one of the things with Windows when you install it if you have a low if you need if you don't have enough RAM to make your system run you can turn your page file up sometimes but to get to that <laughs> I don't know it was like 16 clicks to get to that to be able to to adjust my page file in Windows whereas here it's just just set it right now and you're done with it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of the space here and leave it just like it is and format it to an EXT4. And we'll apply that. Now, EXT4 is a file system. Extended 4 is the real name. Windows uses an MTFS. And you can see there it gave it an MTFS because I formatted it as FAT32. But I'm going to change that to ESP and boot. And we're good to go. Now we can start the installer. Close that out. A single click on the installer. Now, if you did not check your ISO when you downloaded it, if you didn't check your ISO like I showed you in the previous video, this is a good thing. This is checking that ISO against its own key. So you're basically getting some protection here. Especially the first time you boot that ISO, I would suggest you let it check the installation media. We'll fast forward a little bit here. Here's what their menu will look like. You can see M they got a category called MX Tools. Now, this one category sets MX Linux above most all, if not all, other Linux operating systems. So... We're going to change the panel from being on the left side and displayed vertically. We're going to change it to down at the bottom. But did you see where I clicked apply? That's the mistake I made for a long time. I would tell it to set the panel and then just close out and it wouldn't set. <laughs> so you have to look for it. It's there though. Click apply. And now the, the taskbar is at the bottom or the panel. So in here, you can do quite a bit of stuff. This is MX Tweak. One thing I want to point out is you'll see on the left side, it gives you general instructions, and they recommend you read them as you go. So the first option is going to be your keyboard. This is all set up as default for me as U.S. English. Select your keyboard and click Next. Now, remember, we've already partitioned our disk, so we're going to use a customized disk, customize the disk layout. If you just click regular install and use the entire, it'll do some of this for you, but you won't be in control. So the first partition there, we're going to drop down arrow, use the drop down arrow and select ESP. The second one, drop down arrow, you select swap. And now we're going to give the remainder of that to slash. Now, that, that indicates root. In Windows, it would be C or C drive. Here, it's root. All right, we're going to, it's correctly selected ESP. Here, you could select a swap file. There we go. If you wanted to use a swap file and not a swap partition. Computer name, you can change your computer if you're within a domain somewhere and you want you need a, a specific name for your computer, here's where you would do it. Samba server needs to be activated if you want to use it to share some of your directories or printer with local computer that is running MS Windows or Mac OS. Here's our time zone. America is correct. Chicago is in the central time zone for me. Uh, here you could tell it to use the 24-hour format. Now this right here feature is nice. If you wanted to go ahead and enable ZRAM, right here you could check that box and it would enable ZRAM. So you wouldn't even have to mess with it once you get installed. In this case, I'm not going to use any because of the computer, the use of the computer. So you're going to give a username and a password. Very important, remember your password. A root account is the same as an administrator account on Windows. I'm going to select Save Live Desktop Settings. Right here, Simple Screen Recorder. I installed that, and it should be. When I reboot, it should still be installed.
All right, we're getting close to being finished here. Installing grub. Checking to see if they have system monitor installed. They don't have that nor on disk, which is available, just not installed by default. Okay, so I'm going instead of leaving this box checked to reboot, I'm going to just power off because I need to save the recording. So I'll save it and I'll be back. All right, I've come back. And there's the video that we saved right there. This is the, the other one is the new one that's being produced at this point. And it not only saved that, it saved Simple Screen Recorder. That is one awesome function. I don't think that's available on any other distro that I can remember. All right, so down in the lower right hand corner, you'll see a little green box down there. That's for your updates. That's how you'll stay up to date. You don't have to use a command line to do updates. But I'm going to tell this to reload just to make sure it's synced, updated, and ready to upgrade. Fast forward here. Okay, it got those. I'm just going to open back up. I'm also automatically answer yes to all prompts and to close the box when it's finished. Give it my password. Full upgrade is in process. And this will take a minute. Started at 6.07. I'm going to pause the video several times. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and change this menu. Right click on your start menu, select properties, and I'm going to take this out. Now you might want to leave that in there until you get more familiar with your software. Now I changed the position of the categories. I'm going to just tell it to use icon and the title. And let's select a new icon. So that was too dark and I didn't realize it, but I went back and changed it. <laughs> All right. Close that out. I'm going to pause the video again. No, I didn't. <laughs> Looking at their menu. That's the conky that you see. That's called a conky in the upper right hand corner of the desktop. There it is. Tells you several things about the system besides the day and the date, hard drive, memory, and CPU. All right, so I got a prompt. It says that package Etsy Mod Probe.d has been changed. Do I want to use the new one or the one that the installer has packaged and i'm going to use the one that installed the package maintainers version why would i want to use any other version besides that one so i made that a little bigger where you can read it better all right go ahead and just do a little tweak to the panel here for my vision make it a little bigger Let's change it to dark mode. Just give you an idea there. All right, let's check the items. Let's see if we get the net load plug-in. Yep, network monitor. Go ahead and put that in there. Close that out. Highlight it on the bottom there. Use the arrow key to up arrow to where I want it to be, which I went one too far. There we go. Now I can right click on it. Select properties. And in the drop down network device, select WLAN 0. And to test that, let's open up a terminal. And let's ping somebody. And you should see the orange and yellow down there in the network plugin manager or network plugin monitor. So that's good. All right, I paused the video again. <laughs> the upgrade's taking longer than the actual installation did. Opened up notes, which is a pretty handy little program. I don't really use it, but I could. I can see where it would be handy to have sometimes. 
so far we got 20 12 minutes into the upgrade and by now i think we were re uh rebooting so you can configure the plug-in manager if you want to a little bit notes remove that feather pad came in by default nice they use feather pad versus mouse pad 14 minutes thus so far now yeah, let's just see if uh spell check is installed oh not installed that's okay actually come to find out it is installed all i had to do was direct it to Huntsville. it was already installed all right we're almost finished here with the upgrade so really we got uh install and a full upgrade in this video And we're through, and I'm down there playing in the feather pad. <laughs> It'll close out. Two, one, gone. Now, that let me know it was finished. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to save, it, save this, and let's restart. I'm back into it. We got system monitor going. Now, here is where I installed under popular apps, but this is how easy it is to install flat packs. MX Linux makes no promises or whatever about flat packs, no guarantees about them working. It's back for convenience only. And again, this is not something that's in, it's either usually flat packs are usually installed for by default or they're not. And you have to sometimes add a repo. We have to, might have to do some other things to get a flat pack to work. But here it does it for you. It takes care of all that stuff for you. Flat pack is not currently installed. Go ahead and install it. Yes. Give it a password, which right now in Windows, a little it would the tone would come up and say, you want to run this? And you would say yes. So here you can get more details about what it's going to do. I'm just going to say install. Close that welcome screen out for now so it's not running or taking up screen space let's get rid of that battery thing i don't need it I'm not on a laptop okay so i might need to log out and log back in to see whatever in, uh, installed programs but i didn't install anything yet other than flat pack so let's install caden live search it for in the box right there check it or tick it and then go down to the bottom and click install again you can see more details but i'm going to click ok and this is going to end this video. I installed Kaden Live, and that's what I'm doing the editing on. So I'm going to make myself a note here and tell you once you do a flat pack, you should reboot. So I installed flat pack. I should have rebooted then, but I'm going to go ahead and install uh, Kaden Live. So that's going to do it. Let me close this out. Yep. All right. So let me go back to my front view there, take my glasses back off, and that's going to do it for this video. I apologize for it taking a while, but it's really difficult to, to explain what needs to be done and keep it within a certain time limit. You know, truthfully, you, you, you could, <laughs> I have spent days on projects just trying to figure stuff out before, and the same could hold true with you. But if you can make it through the MX Linux install, which I believe you can, and you just follow my guide right here and it'll work just fine. If you can get through that, then they make MX Linux makes all the other stuff a lot easier to attain. It comes with a lot of programs or software. Some people might call it bloat. If you think it's bloat, it's very easy to uninstall it. You don't have to keep it in your system. But they give you a lot of useful tools. And I didn't touch on any of the MX tools, but like I said, that's a category and a, a video all by itself. And uh, so I hope you try Linux. If you do try Linux, 
Tri-MX Linux or Tri-Linux Mint uh, that I did on my previous video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out, guys. Catch you on another one. Bye.